This is Twit. Now, I know there's a lot of you who think you know everything about aluminum. I mean, aluminum is everywhere, right? I mean, when you think about all the different things in the world that have aluminum, that use aluminum, all the, all the super materials that are based on aluminum, it really is a part of modern life. It's light. It's strong. It's very easy to work with, and it's relatively inexpensive. Not only that, it's ridiculously easy to recycle. If you recycle aluminum properly, it takes something like 10% of the energy that it took to first create it. So it is one of these renewable resources that we use again and again and again. Oh, and by the way, I'm being reminded in the chat room that if I had class, it would be pronounced aluminium. But beyond that, it's versatile, and we use it in everything from cans and, and our gadgets and in wiring and in rebarb and in strengthening to high-speed trains. That's right. High-speed trains have a couple of things that they need to do. They need to be very strong. They need to be able to resist aerodynamic forces, and they also need to be incredibly light. And for most of these trains, aluminum is the perfect material to deal with it. Unfortunately, you can't build a train entirely out of aluminum because it tends to be malleable and it tends to be heavier than fiberglass, which is what the outer shell of those high-speed trains are normally made out of. You want something that's going to maintain its shape against the wind, but not weigh it down so much that you're going to require so much more power to drive it at the high speeds required for a high-speed train. So what are you to do? In the past, we've used a combination. We use steel framing, we use a lot of uh, aluminum, but then we use those fiberglass panels on the outside that are strengthened by either steel or aluminum bars to maintain a shell integrity for the high-speed train. But that's not perfect. We found that high-speed trains can be damaged by bird strikes, by rock strikes. At those speeds, Debris goes through a fiberglass shell pretty quickly, and if it doesn't hit one of the aluminum or steel pieces of reinforcement, that could be a disaster waiting to happen. Thankfully, some researchers have figured out a way to use aluminum uh, and make it stronger than steel, lighter than fiberglass, and just oh so awesome. Strictly speaking, it's foam. Now, these researchers in Germany have figured out that they can create an aluminum foam that is a composite material. They use a combination of aluminum, magnesium, silicon, and copper. And in doing this, and, and in using a foaming process, they're able to create a material that is 20% lighter than, uh, than fiberglass, structurally as strong as steel, and offers an impact resistance that can both protect the outer shell of the train and, here's the big one, cushion passengers in the event of a crash. Now, the researchers sandwiched a 25 millimeter layer of foam between two pieces of aluminum, just 25 millimeters thick, and they created a sandwich held together with no glue, just the electrostatic attraction of the atoms in the materials being used. The sandwich was so strong that they didn't need any steel stiffeners like you would in a fiberglass train to maintain the shape of the shell. Or, you know, because the aluminum foam itself is actually strong enough to do that. Now, as for passengers, here's, here's something that I just found a phenomenal. The use of the foam can decrease the amount of energy that is transferred into a passenger's head during an 8G impact by as much as 80% over traditional means. So it's not just a strong material. It's not just a futuristic material. It's a material that could save lives. Now, this is not the first time that we've had materials foam. We've actually had technology to create metal foam for quite a while now. The problem has always been that it's hard to work with metal foam. If you don't get the shape you want, it's not so easy to cut or to weld or to bond or to glue. What these researchers in Germany have done is to come up with a process where they can create the foam in place, in any shape, in any cut, adhered to any material and have a, a, a shell of aluminum goodness. Now, this means that uh, the future, in a word, is foam.